Here is your host, Michael Rivero. And Aloha, America. Welcome back to our show here. And uh, everything seems to be back to normal over at whatreallyhappened.com. Kind of a very bizarre error. We're still trying to find out exactly how it came to happen this morning. And uh, uh, there is no clear explanation for how what happened managed to happen. But at the moment, it looks like everything is back to its normal degree of insanity. So, let's see. <laughs> People over in the chat room are saying, it was Harp. It was uh, chemtrails. It was Bigfoot. And all the rest of it. And I think it's it's our overcomplicated uh, computer systems, you know, dealing with all the security nonsense. And I think the fastest way to get reliable, dependable, highly efficient computers is to start treating computer criminals the way they treat Arabs with cheap Casio wristwatches. But I've been shoveling snow. That's what I've been doing lately. Oh, Okay. Better not tell yeah, Al Gore. He'll be unhappy with, couple, with you. <laughs> we got hit with a couple, uh, one eight-inch uh, up here, and then we hit, hit another five, so we've been busy doing that. Hey, Mike, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit a minute and ruffle your feathers on one thing, but you're exactly right. You look at the past history of going into uh, the uh, wars in the past. It's the same record player of putting the sanctions five, six months ahead of time, okay? Number one. Number two is uh, we had the Abraham Lincoln with the uh, destroyers and uh, I believe a French uh, destroyer or whatever going through the uh, Hermes the other day, stretching the muscles, saying, "If you, you guys ain't going to close this. Okay? You're exactly right. They're going to bleed the American people, and I want people to take heed to this. You think three dollars and what we're paying about three twenty nine here is high? If that uh, gets slowed down, like you were saying, or mm-hmm. if if Iran shuts it down, which they, I believe they're going to, if they put more heavy sanctions on them, your gas prices are going to be phenomenal. You might as well just put your cars up on high hosts. Boy, boys and girls, because you won't be able to drive down the road number two. Yeah, basically, if you're um, paying $3 a gallon now, uh, uh, post-Iran uh, embargo, you're going to be paying $4 a gallon. And uh, as a result, and by the way, the U.S. government is, is basically offering to subsidize Pakistan's fuel needs if they'll come in on the side against Iran. So never mind the fact that you're paying higher gas prices for all this nonsense. The U.S. is going to spend your tax dollars to make sure the Pakistanis have cheap gas. How's that for you? I mean, it's just completely, absolutely yeah, Michael, insane. Uh, right. And, Michael, I want to get you up to date on the, the seriousness of this right here. If you look at, you say Iran, 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 you might as well say Russia. Because yes. you look at 75 to 80 percent of the, the military machinery is in Iran. And this stuff is not anything like Saddam's Scud missiles or whatever. And I tell you what. I hear the preaching of, oh, they're building uranium bomb. They're, be- you know what, Mike? People better wake up and take heed because it's called black gold. You know what black gold is? It's mm-hmm. oil. Yes. All you need to do is do an oil trade for some nuclear missiles, brother. You don't even need to build one. So I, I just wanted to throw that one to ruffle your feathers. People better wake up. Russia, you might as well say they're 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 in it because. I know darn well, Mike, if they go in and they start bombing uh, in Iran, they're going to hit the Bushar nuclear facility, and they got diplomats in there. We said it before, mm-hmm. and you're going to ignite a, a, a time bomb that's going to go into a whole mid-east mid, uh, uh, middle war. Thank you for taking my call, Mike, and you keep preaching that truth, brother. All right, thanks an awful lot. You're absolutely correct. The the danger here is, and this is why we're concerned about a false flag. I'll get back to that in just a second. The concern here is there are Russian national citizens on the ground at that Bashir reactor. The technicians who are there, the diplomats who are there, and until Iran actually finishes paying it all off, that reactor is at least in in, uh, some part still Russian state property. That power station, you know, it, it represents a significant investment on both parts. And, of course, if Israel bombs that power station, the resulting cloud of radioactivity is going to waft up there to the northeast. And Russia's not going to be happy about that either, after all they went through with Chernobyl. And Russia has already said they will view an attack on Iran as an attack on their interests, 
China has said exactly the same thing. Russia and China have been playing Neville Chamberlain and figuring, oh, if we let Israel and the U.S. grab a few small, you know, uh, unimportant countries, they'll be happy and they'll go home. And, of course, as Neville Chamberlain found out with the Nazis, it doesn't happen. You know, you, you gobble up a little tiny country, 30 minutes later you're hungry for a larger one. And China and Russia are talking about an alliance against the aggression of the United States of America. So that's where we are. Now, the only way the United States and Israel can attack Iran and stand a chance of not having Russia and China come in on the other side is if they stage a false flag incident that makes it look like Iran's got it coming, whether that is attacking the USS Enterprise, bombing the Pro Bowl, bombing the Super Bowl. We don't know what's going. could even be a cyber false flag attack. Take down the Internet and the blog and the alternative media because they've got to silence them anyway after the drubbing they took on 9-11, and say, oh, it's those gosh darn Iranian hackers. Not that we would believe that, but that's what they're going to have to do. If the U.S. and Israel simply attack Iran, they're just inviting Russia and China to come on the other side. And we will be in a high-intensity, true World War III. And it's going to go nuclear, and the U.S. is going to lose it. We're going to take a break for commercials. We'll be right back. Here is your host, Michael Rivero. And Aloha America. Welcome back to our show here. And somebody just sent me this story out of, uh, uh, well, it's coming out of Haaretz. And basically what it is, I think in response to the fact that we keep hitting the fact that there is no evidence Iran is building a nuclear weapon or has a nuclear weapon. And so they're changing the story a little bit now because American and European leaders are acknowledging there is no Evidence that Iran is building a nuclear weapon. None. Zero. Zip. Nada. Okay. Israel, as of the 18th of this month in Haaretz, is saying that to the best of their knowledge, Iran is not building a nuclear bomb, has not even decided to build a nuclear bomb. So the entire case for war right now, from Israel's point of view, rests on the idea that Iran might decide to build a nuclear bomb at some point in the future. Therefore, let us go kill them now. That rationale for war, of course, could be applied to every single country on Earth. We should kill them now because somewhere down the road they might decide to build an atomic bomb. It's no big deal to build a uranium bomb. Take two chunks of uranium, slap them together, boom, you've got a uranium bomb. You are now all potential nuclear powers because you know the secret of the uranium bomb. Not that big a deal. It's just very difficult making that fissionable material. And Iran is not doing that either. Because contrary to the propaganda that you're getting on the news, it is not a trivial exercise to take uranium that's enriched to the levels required for reactor fuel and turn it into the 95-plus percent enrichment required for a nuclear weapon. It's not like a blender where you go from, you know, chop to frappe. It takes acres and acres of additional machinery to do that. It is not a trivial exercise at all. Now then, moving right along here. Aloha, America. Welcome back to the show here. And it's kind of interesting that uh, somebody just sent me this article. It's from the New York Times. It's apparently going to appear this weekend in their magazine basically saying, will Israel attack Iran? And in this one, Netanyahu is setting out the case to attack Iran uh, purely on this idea that Iran's leadership are dedicated to destroying Israel. Now, they've never actually said that. There's that one mistranslation where Ahmadinejad said Israel will vanish from the pages of history, which is a passive observation, and it's true. No nation lasts forever. But Netanyahu's taking the attitude that any nation that doesn't love Israel uh, without reservation in question needs to be destroyed. And Israel's attitude all along has been that they have the right to lie, cheat, steal, assassinate, subvert, bribe, extort other countries because those other countries don't like them. And apparently it's too stupid to understand that it is the lying, cheating, stealing, extortion, assassination that is the reason other countries don't like Israel. It's like a bully who goes around punching kids because they don't like him. Why don't they like him? Because he goes around punching people. That's exactly what Israel's mindset is right now. And, of course, we understand that if Israel attacks Iran, they're not going to finish the job. 
They already know the United States government has an ironclad, to paraphrase Barack Obama, we will support Israel. Israel can go out and start all the wars at once and we'll throw America's children into the fray to finish it all up. It's your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your nieces, nephews, cousins, aunts, uncles, spouses, your main squeeze. Because we know if this war in Iran gets going, the United States does not have enough money, they do not have enough manufacturing, and they certainly don't have enough manpower. And the very first thing they're going to correct is that last one. There will be a conscription. They might not even call it a draft because that's a politically loaded word in an election year. But we've heard all of the, the neocons screaming about national service. We should live our lives exactly the way Israel does. All kids go into the military. It'll be good for them. And if you listen to all those kids who've been in the Israeli military and they've gone public saying, no, it isn't very good at all. We're doing immoral, illegal things. We're, do, we're committing war crimes. And they've gone public with that. This war with Iran is a big, big mistake. And you can tell them I said so.